Hi everyone, I'm Aaron. Today we look at the next part of Bricky's Every Single Warhammer 40k Faction Explained Part 1. Now, last time around, we got to the very beginning of the Grey Knights, and frankly, I really want to know more about this because I don't actually know that much about Grey Knights beyond what was in If the Emperor Had Texas Speech Device, which is basically, Draco has some lore that is so absolutely insane, I thought it was a joke until I realized, no, they're quoting canon 40k. Sun Eater. I thought that was a joke. No, I don't know. But I want to know more about the lore in general. So this is going to be a lot of new stuff that I might not be aware of. And I'm really looking forward to that. You guys know the deal. Link below video. Hit it up. Let's get started. And speaking of burning demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grey Knights. I kind of just want some of these models because they look the cool. I also are like painting gray. Army I actually oh, collected so back gray. in 7th edition. The Grey Knights oh, he's actually a former Grey Knight collector. Wait, 7th edition? Back when it was much more complex. And... Admittedly, almost nothing of their model range changed, so he's probably more or less up on exactly how this. Yeah, nothing really changed. Are hmm. a super secretive and much added more a few old updated models. Look at power armor and the baby knights, carrier. Except they are all psychers. Yep. All of them have that crazy space magic magician shit. For every hundred thousand guardsmen, there's one gray knight. For every ten thousand sisters of battle, there. Considering there's probably billions of guardsmen, though, that this is from the Matt Ward era of storytelling, which I've been told included a lot of numbers and really hard facts that do not make any sense because he just threw them out because big numbers. Admittedly, I mean, big numbers sound cool is accurate because big numbers do sound cool. And this is an inherently ridiculous setting, so it doesn't matter if big numbers sound cool and are insane. Also, I love this art of the Grey Knight because it's something you very rarely see in 40k. Blue sky and bright. And it really highlights just how shiny and awesome their armor is. God damn it. I swear, I want this model just for the highlights of the writing on the shoulder pads and bits of the pauldrons and the chest plate. I want it because that is so fun to paint. Tiny little details you can just pick out little bits and pieces of. It's a challenge and I suck at it, but I love doing it. Ugh, I'm talking myself into buying them, aren't I? thousand space marines, there's one Damn Grey it. Knight. Grey Knights are the strongest of the strong, both in mental will and absolute just strength. These are. I mean, more than the other strongest of the strong, which are the space marines, or the strongest of the strong, which are the custodies, or the strongest of the strong that were, uh, I guess, Titan pilots. Attending. Oh, someone drew art with them actually covered in the baby carrier. I wish we had this option because it's basically just a tell... This is basically a Telamon where they carved off the front and they put a Grey Knight in the middle and then opened up the centerpiece while adding the chest piece back on. If I didn't absolutely despise working with resin, I would actually consider kit bashing this. There are space marines that are all high level psychers, all of them able to specifically do one goal and that is kill demons yep the emperor believed that the demons of chaos were the number one threat to the imperium and he probably is right probably However, this group isn't probably i mean to the imperium directly admittedly incompetence and people turning to chaos because of their own stupidity even more than the machinations of chaos itself that would probably be number one but that's chaos adjacent so i'll give it to them Followed by the Necrons if they got serious, but thankfully that never seems to happen, and in the current timeline there's a civil war keeping them from getting serious, it'll probably never end. Or they'll just come out so weak and it won't end. That's what I would say, except things have been moving forward, so maybe plot contrivance won't keep things the same forever for once. And by forever, I mean never changing as opposed to changing within the next 20 years. Maybe. Entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet, like the silver, or I guess it. the moon of Titan in the soul system. I mean, Titan is huge. are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear. To get an idea, I'm pretty sure Titan is bigger than the planet Mercury and the planet Pluto. Fuck you. I know it's still a planet. I know it's technically a demi planet, but hey, it has planet in the name. And I'm counting that part more than the other part. Also, Ceres is awesome when you find out more about it. That's more just me geeking out over astronomy clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level psychers. These great need to be able possessed. to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castle and Crow. He had... I, 
I mean, yes. Yeah, what he's saying is completely accurate. Psychers who are like the Grey Knights can go into the warp, can pull on the warp and not go insane. But that that's, yeah, this is a every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square thing. In this case, the psychers from the Imperium, all the librarians, all of the people who draw on the warp can pull from it without going insane because anyone who would go insane is eaten by the emperor, essentially. They're one of the people fed to them. Anyone who isn't strong enough is fed to them or used as astropath choirs, but that's if they're an astropath. That's completely different. That's just its own random mutation that also involves psyker bullshittery. Grey Knights are a step beyond that, where if you're trained, you can fight and be sane. I mean, perfectly sane is debatable for anyone, but that's more just judgment calls. Grey Knights, that step beyond isn't so much... We can pull on the warp and be sane. It's, we can step into the warp. We can shove our fist down a demon's throat and it will burn from being exposed to us. And that's not me being hyperbolic. They put the names of demons on there. So there's a good chance that if the demon has the name written on the armor somewhere, which is why all their language is there and it's probably smaller in the actual pictures. Well, in the art we see, yeah. But on the inside, there's some lore that they rate all the names they know. So if they come in contact, they have an advantage and it might burn the demon if that happens or have other actions. What I'm basically saying is they take it from we stay in the warp and we're saying to we are anathema to the warp. And anathema is a very strong word in 40k because it means something that is absolutely opposed to something else. And anathema to that would be like a bullet made specifically for one person who would kill that one person no matter what. It is the fuck you, I am your kryptonite. I mean, I could also bash someone over the head with it if we are still usually weapons. But also for you, <laughs> fuck you in particular. It's that level of what they should do in lore. In the tabletop, they're more balanced so they don't just absolutely destroy demon armies and then are also overwhelmed through sheer numbers. This is the only way they're actually beaten. Because on one-on-one, -on -one, mostly they're going to win. One on a thousand? Retreating is sometimes more necessary. But still, that's closer to what they're actually at. It's really absurd what they can get up to in that level. So just saying that they don't go crazy is accurate, but also really cutting them short on power. It's one of the reasons I actually really like their faction, because they're just so bullshit in what they're supposed to do. As a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama, and he Antwerp? has to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, constantly beckoning them, use my power, use my strength, suck my penis, whatever the possibility. I mean, if a Slaneshi person picked it up, that would probably be one of the things it offers. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently. And he has to stave it off forever, being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield because anyone who gets Oops, too close to, to it might be tempted a little too hard. He also, he's saying that he's getting this demon blade of immense power, tempting him to use his power. He's still using it as a sword. Yes, he basically has the equivalent of a psychic nuke on his hip, and he uses people as targets to bash them over the head with a nuke. He has the button to detonate the nuke. He's not detonating the nuke. He is bashing people over the head with an armed nuclear weapon. That is exactly the kind of idea that is going down right here. And it is as stupid and crazy as and it's, he's getting it to. And I should have skipped this section. It's actually tempting me to get Grey Knights. I don't even want to play Grey Knights. I just think I like to paint them. And they look so freaking cool. I get... I'm one of the weird people who like the baby carrier. I think it's hilarious. I have one in the background. I need to fix it up. It, it came broken because I bought it broken for significantly cheaper fixable i just never get around to it i just ah is that this is going to kill my wallet of heart and mind and all the characters in the gray knights are basically like that no heart's a little that, debatable um, mind yeah have a scorched earth policy you know, more ways than one if they're fighting demons demons corrupt and make people crazy so if i'm a guardsman and i'm fighting demons and the gray knights arrive and they kill all the demons yes lanesh would do that I mean, if anything, it would be too wholesome for Slanesh, but that's also because the show itself was actually remarkably wholesome when you got past the show itself. Yeah, and because my wife might see this video, I have not seen that anime that I am unaware of. I'm a risk. 
And so guess who's not making it out of there? On the yeah. tabletop, they're very strike fast, strike hard kind of people. Yeah, actually, that's one of the cool things. They started moving away from that. But as of this week, they just changed rules where some units can now strike hard and fast again. I'm specifically talking about Drago because he gets three extra inches off a charge from Deep Strike and he can Deep Strike after being already on the field. It's so freaking bullshit. I have a copy of Drago, so I'm really excited because I just think he's cool. Also, I really love the paint job here. It's hard to get eyes right, and these are a freaking amazing. God damn, Bricky, where did you find these? Are these your models? Damn. They teleport all around the place. Also, they I just love strike cloaks groups, on models. Small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only have so many characters, but with it, you get in there. You're that very a lot tough, of baby carriers. Tanky, you hit really hard, and you try to bounce around the battlefield quickly, but you don't have numbers, and so every dead Grey Knight hits really damn hard. They're fun, though, if you like that. I mean, yeah, but also, Grey Knights are in a weird position where they don't have numbers, but also... They kind of have numbers now because there's so many more elite factions that have high demanding cost points that these guys kind of almost feel like that middle ground where they're just elite enough that their losses hurt, but just low cost enough that you can still pump out a bunch of them. They, they don't, they're a specialist faction, but not too elite and not too swarmy. They're right in the middle ground, as far as I've been able to see on the plane. Or, let me rephrase that. As far as I've seen other people play it, maybe there's a better way to play it that is hyper-elite with tiny amounts of units, like Custodes, but I don't think they usually go that far. That kind of, or great, or uh, nice in general. Kind of army. Oh, and also, uh, Kaldor Drago is a yeah. thing. Oh, Where the I get He's doing the TTS version because the eyes are just a tiny little pinprick. Nice. Get into Kaldor Drago. Ah! Oh. That is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, you're wimping out, Bricky. Do it. Give in to the Drago. It gets crazier every step of the way. I mean, admittedly, these are intro videos. That's the absolute worst choice. But I would love if he had made that mistake and gone into that rabbit hole of what the fuckery that is Drago. I am the hammer. I am the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soul. I am five years old. But everything about that first half, I am this shit beer in his hand. It, it, it sounds, um... Well, let's put it this way. The Emperor made an entire army full of dude bros in his image. I'd say he's getting off on this, but he literally can't get off the throne anymore. So, yeah. Soldier at the battle at the end of time. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. They are as holy as you can get for a Space Marine. If you like Space Marines and you want to... You don't think they're holy enough? You want to be holier? Great Knights. For shame, Bricky. Impugning the honor of the Sword and Board Wardens. I actually forgot the name of the Crusading chapter, the Black Templars. Huh. Also, I'm not going to refer them as Sword and Board Wardens unironically because I kind of love that. Now, if you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. <laughs> <laughs> These things... They are ridiculous. They are good and they are bad, depending on however much GW realizes, oh, fuck, we made them too powerful, or fuck, we made them way too nerfed. But goddamn, are they always freaking cool to look at, man. These are centerpiece models. And I am really like forward to this. Gigantic oh, so it's not the yes, Armager, the Basic Knights, and the Castellan. I just, I just, ah! I don't even need it. I just want these. Here's the size of homes or medium-sized buildings. Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like well, he 40 on of them per turn? Do you want a gigantic old school knight noble house style of walkers with giant chainsaws? They're so expensive, but they're so knights. cool. Imperial knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them because they're just gigantic walkers, but they have this old school like house feel to them. Like literally like they're houses. Each Imperial knight comes from a house and each of them act in their own special way. These behemoth of walkers oh, the elder also Wraith? destroy almost everything in their path, killing full swaths of squads in a couple shots, stepping on legions of troops. Like, <sighs> these things do not mess around. And they look so cool. Imperial they Knights do. and Chaos Knights, actually, for that matter, yeah. don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or Chaos God you currently believe in. 
And sometimes they have extra bits where you can see the pilots on the inside, but that's usually when you get to larger specialty models, which they do make. And frankly, some of the extras they give you on this, there's so much of the model that is actually covered up. So you have a lot of options if you want to show battle damage and cut off pieces of armor to show it's something's been destroyed. There are actually sculpted pieces of the model underneath it that will show you the various ins and outs and workings here. It's not a really good option, but uh, just the one I'm working on right now. Yeah, I like gold. Just there's so much detail that none of this you're ever going to see, but there's like little wires and rivets in here. I'm not sure it's coming through on the image, but all of that is completely something that you could work on. And there's more underneath the overarching covers on top of that. So these are models that are significantly over-engineered. And just from a sheer plastic model, if I wasn't already tempted to buy shit off this video, I would have already bought one of these. But I have one, so I don't need to worry about that. <laughs> just let me believe that for now. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. Yeah. The big, scary, they come with a lot of options, too. And if you magnetize, it's easy. And if you want to collect them, go to town. They make for a great painting project, too. Yes. Game over back down to earth. A lot of paint, about a little bit, Like, uh, a little physically, bit a, little a lot of usage. Gold. Yee! Okay, admittedly, I'm biased on this. I love Custodes the most because of if the Emperor had Texas speech device. And I am actively looking for a 3D sculpt of a Russian blue head to put on a custodian warden body because I'm going to say that's my Captain General Kitten. And I'm sticking to this one. If you get that reference, yes, that is an if the Emperor had a text speech device reference. And I'm sticking to it because it amuses me. And that's really all I care about. <laughs> if guardsmen are regular soldiers, space marines are super soldiers. Great. Really? Really, Bricky? You, you chose the most offensive golden velvet teen or even like polyester shiny sweatpants possible for this i just where do you even find this it's not so much that you use it it's that you found it in the first place what were you google you know what never mind it's someone on the internet i don't want to know that answer Grey Knights are super, super soldiers. Yeah. The Adeptus Custodes are super soldiers cubed. The yeah. Adeptus Custodes are the third major army I own. I, I know, three armies. I know. I got yes. Three armies. That That is... Yeah. I don't have any idea how that would go. I... I <laughs> yeah, it's not like I have sisters... A significant faction of Imperial Guard. A significant faction of Grey Knights. Space Marines. And Custodes. And at least one Knight only. So far so. Yeah. Yeah, three is so many. Uh, I'm not even being called out. And I feel called out on this one. I, w I got carried away, okay. But that, that's all. I yes, was three, okay? you were. Ugh. Yeah, I get they that feeling, though. They are our final brand of Space Marines, but these ones are super special, okay? If a guard is super duper Marines. Foot, a Space Marine is seven feet, a Custodian is eight feet. Easy way to look at it. Every single Custodian standard level troop model is the equivalent of some character models that you build armies around in other armies. So, yeah, it's basically an entire hero hammer army as the standard troop. These are the giant defenders of Holy Terra, which is also Earth. Earth is Terra. Earth, Terra. Themselves. Yeah. These are the Admittedly, that's that actually a name for Earth right now, too. The Emperor's a name. Throne Room. Hence, Custodes. These boys protect the Emperor's Throne Room at all times and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans brought up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. Yep. I think from a tube. These behemoths. There's debatable lore on the tube aspect because i've actually seen people say that that's how it goes and i've also seen a lot of people say no 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 it's just infants who are chosen sometimes as late as two years old who are chosen ah, this is one of those things where it's been around so long in the lore before they had a faction that some of their lore is so old and so bullshit because of some of the old shit being like they ran around the imperial palace naked for a long time that was the actual way custodians were dressed naked in the palace only i thought that was a joke but no that was actually canon so when it comes to how they're made that is very much pick what you like and stick to that as consistently as you want because there's probably something else out there that's even dumber 
and will make you cringe. Famous of men are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall and functionally immortal. They stand still. I mean, technically, most space marines are functionally immortal. They just usually get killed before that is noticeable. Spear in hand for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat, watching over the throne room and every other area of Holy Terra for their entire purpose in life. And oh my lord, are they terrifying. These custodians put space marines to shame. Except if you like your super soldiers, these are your super mega soldiers. One of these men can take on probably three space marines and most likely win. There are I mean, admittedly, if it was one custodian versus five guards, yeah, five space marines, depending on what they have melee weapon wise, yeah, they're pretty damn good. It's one of the reasons I like them. Because you can buy a small box and have an entire useful army immediately. So it's the actual only affordable faction. I mean, there's also that aspect. Many different groups of custodians as well, like the Solar Watch, or there's also one of my personal favorite, the Aquilin Shield. Which the they all got go removed until 10th edition adds them back in. ...and protect them, because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in their lives. For instance, let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall golden god because that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something of that nature. The custodians hmm. work in mysterious ways and are almost always outnumbered. Okay, I recognize that model, but this one in the background? It looks like the same model, but with a flight pack. I'm pretty sure that's also a Telemon as well, but it could be as the background, but it could be different. I love this though. The longer shield the drapery. I didn't know I needed this, but I need this. I need this version of the custodian dreadnought with a flight pack, sword and board, and all of the freaking robes coming off it, man. That is so freaking... I, If I could bash cloth, I would love to do this, but I, I can't deal with cloth. It, it's just a bitch to try and sculpt. It's a bitch to get off other models because they're usually incorporate. I just... Oh, that looks so cool. If there was an entire unit of just dreadnought flying custodies with cloth everywhere, I would, I would probably spend way too much money for my own sake. It's probably a better idea that they don't do this, for the sake of my wallet, which is already screaming in pain enough as is. Numbered, but never <sighs> outmatched. These people are pretty horrifying, both on the tabletop as well as in the lore. Except there right are now very few nerfed. of them, however, and there's actually an extremely small amount of them. But that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war yep. gear this strong, weapons oh, this powerful, these and training still. this good. They're so the hard to use resin. have all three of it. For 100 years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue, but always ready, always attuned to dangers unseen. Days, months, years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond those walls, yet within, little moved, and nothing changed. For 100 years, I did not but wait. Yet had any threat appeared, I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100 years, I stood my watch. And as it ends, I can tell you this, patience is a weapon. The Unfortunately, that means he's not mentioning the fact that, and again, I know I said this, but I'm going to say it again. Canonically, there was custodies who, to show their mark of shame that the emperor was on the throne, would not wear armor. Or anything else. That is actually canon. I looked it up. I found the quotes. People showed me the references. And it's so bullshit. I actually kind of like it. Even though it again is absolute bullshit. Custodians are the top dogs of the Imperium. Can't and wait for Valdor to come back out since he's confirmed alive. I do alive. want to discuss a little bit about the Sisters of Silence before we get out of here. Because the Sisters I wish of they Silence weren't so expensive I also to get. have a few of. And they're really fun. But they don't get enough attention. These kind of okay to give someone an idea of what I'm talking about here or what he's talking about when they don't get enough attention, they don't get any. They are sometimes forgotten when they came out at the end of eighth before ninth came out. Their rules were broken. They could be taken in a detachment that didn't exist because it was going to be in a later edition, but they didn't put it back into the first edition. So for months, I think maybe two months. It was an unplayable faction that they were printing out so you could buy it and not use it. And then when they finally put them out, it's like, okay, here, you can have these. What do they do? They take up space, which admittedly is good for just controlling things, just having random breakers in there so people can't deep strike. It's good for side things that are 
not good at what they're like. They're supposed to be gnolls. They're supposed to be anti psyker And now it's just they're kind of, oh, yeah, we have them. But why would we ever just not take a Kalexis assassin? Uh, they're they're very much a faction aspect of the agents of the throne or custodies faction, which is like what they're kind of folded into that are very much forgotten completely and utterly. And it's disappointing because they actually have some really interesting lore. And that's, it's just kind of sad. Also, I like anyone who can dress around in everything gold. I, I, I like gold, okay? I like gold. Yeah, I went there. Bald plume ladies are a whole group of pariahs or also known as blanks. We'll be referring yep. to them as blanks from now on. So as every mind is somewhat connected Lore to the is warp, awesome. These on the tabletop, never been useful. These blanks are a mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily. Because of that mind suppression, normal people feel this weird, like, uncomfortable nature when around them. When a sister of silence walks past them, you feel ill. You feel just uncomfortable and strange. So most of them don't actually live past childhood, because once they are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed. Dead. Or something at a very young age, because they just emit a horrifying aura. These ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, none of the custodians are psychers, so they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds of psychic. Admittedly, that's actually something they got right on the tabletop. Psychers fuck over custodies because it doesn't matter how strong your armor, it doesn't matter how good your save, it doesn't matter how high your toughness. Admittedly, that was more previous editions than current one. If you get a mortal wound on you, you fucked is what I would say, except one of the changes they made within the last week is that they can actually start dealing with those again for now. I'm sure it'll eventually be like, ooh, that's actually useful. Let's not have it anymore. Because that's happened multiple times. Phenomena. These sisters are extremely specialized in it. All of them taking a vow of silence as they don't speak, hence the term sisters of silence, but they communicate through hand gestures and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely adept at dealing with them thanks to their blank gene. They normally work a lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats, but they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model for them, which is very unfortunate. I hope. Yeah, and you can see most of it here, except this one has two pigtails, which is already more customization than the actual models have, and fur. Yeah, these are actually better than the actual models. That's actually disappointing. But yeah, you get the sword ones, which admittedly look freaking amazing and don't actually matter. We have the ones with guns who are there. They're cheap in an army that's usually triple to double the cost. And then you have ones with flamers who you shouldn't run. Just don't. Don't do it. They'll get something new soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore. But hopefully we'll get there soon. But Oh, so that's exactly the time period he put... I mentioned before that there was a little period where they came out and they weren't working there. So he's either talking when the model started coming out for it or how many years ago was this? Three years ago? Exactly. March 29th, 2020. He put this out as the pandemic started. So yeah, this would have been right before... 9th edition launch right before Indominus came out. It would have been at the exact moment where they were waiting for corrections to Ayla and whatever the guy's name who you ignore is because they came together in a box as a combined unit that you couldn't actually play because they're supposed to work together, but they're technically from separate factions, so you were literally not allowed to play the model that you could buy. And that got corrected later, but at this time period, that wasn't something that came out yet. And he's right. They did fix it. And then it got too good, and then it got bad, and stayed bad, except until recently, where everything else got nerfed and they stayed the same, so it technically counts as a win? We'll find out. If we're talking about blanks. Rule changes are bullshit. Let's talk assassins. Oh. Okay, full disclosure, I was actually planning on initially finishing this. Then I saw the time, and it's almost one o'clock, and I had something scheduled in the next five minutes that I need to get to, and I'm probably going to be late. That's on me. I lost track of time. I was having fun. And this is, I, God damn it. I'm geeking out so much about these factions. I, I, just, I don't want to go out and buy more. But I also am very much aware that my wallet is probably just screaming in pain right now. Because I'm looking at these models. I'm looking at some of the Grey Knights and going, I want to paint that. Let me paint you. Oh. I'm going to give in to this. I know it. I know it very well. 
Yeah. So there's probably going to be more Grey Knights in the background. Technically, you can kind of see them blurred up here behind the Custodian tank. I really like some of these factions. I've got the Forge World stuff. Sometimes, though, like the tank behind me, I buy them off eBay because eBay sniping every now and again works out well. And sometimes it doesn't and you pay more and then you feel like an idiot. But sometimes it doesn't and you don't feel like an idiot. And that's nice. And like most of the time. But I just this. God, this is. It's all the factions I want to get more in right here. It's the Grey Knights. It's more custodians, just because more custodians in general is something I want. And the knights and the... Just, mm. This entire section is literally just kryptonite for my wallet, damn it. The entire thing I mentioned about anathema earlier, Bricky is now an anathema to me having a financial stability. Well, yes, financial stability. <sighs> this is on me for enjoying this. I did this to myself. I have no one to blame but myself. So I'm going to do the adult rational thing and blame Bricky because why not? Damn you, Bricky. Uh, my BSing aside, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. He's doing a great job explaining things. And maybe he'll get to Drago because I want to see exactly what he could pull out on him because I've seen just a little bit of Drago's lore and that little bit made me absolutely love how bullshit the character is in like the most absurd way possible. I would love to see what a deeper dive on him specifically would look like. That would be awesome. All the same though. You guys know the deal. Link below. Hit it up. If you haven't already, fix that. If you have, great. Oh, and I guess you'd leave a like, subscribe here too. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.